good morning friends welcome to a new week our topic this morning is total repentance from sin before we start let us pray father in the name of jesus we thank you because you are god we lift your name above every other name we only be highly exalted forever in jesus name holy spirit of the living god come and take control in the name of god the father in the name of god the son in the name of god the holy spirit amen our topic total repentance from sin i'll read from the bible the book of second corinthians 5 17 and it says therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature all things are passed away Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. All things have passed away. All things have become new. What does it mean for someone to totally repent from sin? Yes, we are Christians, but we still live in sin. Some claim to be born again believers, Christians, but are still living 50% Christianity, 50% sinful life. No. Totally repent from sin means removing all the Adam's coat, putting on the new man in Christ Jesus. Repenting from all your sin, forsaking sin, Forsaking your old ways, all things have passed away. All things have become new. You claim you have repented totally from sin, but you still indulge in idle words. You still indulge in filthy talks. You still communicate. You still mingle with the bad ex. Remember what the Bible said. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Yes, you claim you are a Christian. You claim you've repented totally from your sin. But you are seen in the midst of evil doers. You are seen in the midst of people that talk filthy things. Even Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah 6 from verse 1 to 7 said, I am sorry for dwelling in the midst of people of unclean lips. He asks for forgiveness of sin. I've seen so many people that claim to be Christians saying all manner of things, filthy things, filthy communication, filthy words coming out from their mouth. You claim you're a Christian, you've repented. On Sunday, you go to church, fine. Then on Monday, where are you? You go to a herbalist home. On Tuesday, where are you? You are at a hotel with your side chick. On Wednesday, where are you? You are at a hotel with a harlot. No. You have not repented totally from your sin. You are deceiving yourself. You are still wearing the garments of iniquity. You go to church with the biggest Bible, maybe the Bible bigger than this, my own. But what happens? How is your heart? How is your lifestyle? Your garment, is it pure? Or is it filled with iniquity? Or is it stained with sin? Who are the born again? Those that have repented totally from their sin. Those that have decided to follow Christ. We all answer Christians. What is the meaning of Christians? Christ-like. Those that behave like Christ. Those that behave like Christ. They live their lives as Christ lived when he was on earth. Those that have repented totally from sin. They are free from sin. And Revelation 14 said, who are these? He said, those that have washed their robes. Those that are virgins. You cannot, remain to, to, you cannot repent totally from your sin. Listen to me. You cannot repent totally from your sin, but you still fornicate. You still sleep around. You still commit adultery. You still commit fornication. You still commit lies. You, you tell lies. You still commit all forms of sin. But yet you claim you have repented totally from your sin. No. Let me tell you. The Bible says in the book of Romans 6. 1, are we going to continue living in sin that grace abounds? The Bible said, God forbid. You continue living in sin. You continue living in secret sin. 
you think nobody sees you but god sees you even your right hand neighbor might not see you your family nobody knows the sin you indulge in but remember there is an all seen eye remember the bible says in psalm 24 verse 1 that the whole earth is of the lot and the fullness thereof the world and those that dwell therein it means whatever you do god see it even in the darkest places no matter where you commit it, he sees you. Your judgment is waiting for you. Who are the born again? Those that have repented totally from sin and have made new in Christ Jesus. Those that have received the Holy Ghost. Those that have restituted. What is restitution? The final stage of repentance. Putting right what was done wrong. I can remember sometime last year, I had a little misunderstanding with someone. I felt the presence of God leaving me. I knew that I was empty, yes. I know something left me and that was the presence of God because of the misunderstanding. Judging it as a human being, he wronged me. He was supposed to apologize to me. But judging it as a Christian, I had to restitute. I went to him. I told him, I am sorry. Immediately, I felt the presence of God coming back. Let me tell you, restitution, forgiveness is not for your offender. It is for you. As a child of God, you must have to forgive. You must have to put right what was done wrong. Meet the person that offended you, even the person you offended. Tell them, I am sorry. You've put right what was done wrong. Stop living a life of unforgiveness. Stop living a life of malice. Stop living a life of anger, rot, lies, stealing. All those things defies you. All those things does not show you've totally repented from sin. Remember what I said. Forgiveness is not for your offender. It is for you. If you read the book of Matthew 6, let us read the book of Matthew 6. The book of Matthew, chapter 6. I read from verse 14 and 15. It says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. As a Christian, do you still live in unforgiveness? Do you still bear grudge against your offender? Some will say, I forgive, but I keep records. Some will say, I will forgive you, but I cannot forget. Yes, it is hard. If you remember the things the person did to you, the hurt, the disappointment, the pains, you find it difficult, but you remember you are doing it for your soul. Remember you are doing it as a Christian that has repented totally from sin. Remember you are doing it. For the sake of the kingdom of God. There are blessings attached to restitution. Okay? Favor from God. When you've restituted, you receive favors from God. Speedy answers to prayers. Like I said earlier, I felt the presence of God leaving me. I tried praying that day. That was 12 p.m. said in Jesus' name. A voice told me, your prayers are going nowhere. Better go and restitute. I was like, another voice told me, no, don't do that. He, he's, he's the one that is supposed to apologize to you. Do not apologize. I said, no. Which voice will you listen to? Is it the voice of salvation or the voice of destruction? I went to him and after that, what happened? Speedy answers to my prayer. I got the answers to my prayer immediately. Obedience to the word of God. Healing. 
anointing for exploits, hearing from God from time to time, protection, those that have rejected the devil and all his works are those that have repented totally from their sin. The Bible says, reject the devil and he will flee. If you have repented totally from your sin, you will reject the devil and all his work. You will tell him, no, enough is enough. I am not your own. I am for Jesus. There is a song I like. In some sense, I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you will come. Jesus, I am your own. I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you will come. Jesus, I am your own. Can you make that declaration? Jesus, God, I am your own. Till the day you will come, I belong to you. Can you tell the devil, enough is enough. I am not your own. Can you tell the devil, get lost, I am not your own. Can you make that declaration today? All those watching these videos, listening to this voice, can you make that declaration today that I am God's own till the very day he will come, you belong to him. Have you rejected the devil and all his packages? Christ did it in the book of Matthew for you can do it too because you are Christ-like. He rejected the gifts, the packages the devil came with to lure him. He rejected them. You too can reject the gift of what? Of the devil. The, a life without Christ is in crisis. The devil cannot come into your life and bring it peace. Never. The devil will come into your life and bring in destruction, trouble, pains. So many troubles. He will bring in lots of storms to your life. But if our Lord Jesus comes into your life, he is coming to calm the storm. He's coming to give you peace. He's coming to amend your life. He's coming to change you. Good. He's coming to give you the joy that you seek. Now he might say the joy of the Lord is my strength. He's coming to make you a better person. He's coming to prepare a better place for you. Only if you accept him. Only if you repent totally from your sin. Only if you shun the devil out of your life. Only if you invite the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in you. Those that live a life filled with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Have you repented totally? But you still live a life filled with the fruit of the flesh. Have you repented totally? But you bear no good fruit. If you read the book of Matthew 7, it's told us about the fruit. An apple tree cannot bear a mango seed. It's not possible. By their works you shall know them. You claim you've repented totally from sin, but you still bear evil seed. You do not bear good seed, but you bear evil seed. Why? But you claim you have repented from your sin totally. Let me tell you, the time is short. This is the hour of grace. This is the time of grace. A time man should make amend. A time we should say, no, this is time for us to seek first the kingdom of God and its all righteousness. So that every other thing shall be added unto us. This is a time man should be focused on running his race. Not even about the earthly vanities. All this will pass away. All these cars, the houses, they will all pass away. But one thing that will remain sure is the word of God.
Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall what? Reap. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 24, verse 35, Let heaven and earth pass away, if my word will not come to pass. The word of God is ever sure. Whatever promises God makes to you, he will fulfill it only if you keep to your own bargain. Our God does not break his promise. He does not go back on his promises or his covenant. No. It is man that go back on the promises we have with God. It is man that breaks the covenant man has with God. Those that do not conform to the pattern of the world. Emulation. This is the problem. Youths face this day. Youths, listen to me. Emulation. Let me do as my friend. Ah, my peer groups. Ah, this one is driving G-Wagon. This one is driving the latest Benz. And that is why we have children of 14 years, 15, 17, 19, teenagers going into Yahoo. Everybody wants to make it fast. Nobody wants to follow the narrow path again. They all want the broad paths. What did the book of God, what did the Bible say? Say it in the book of Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Let us read that place. So enter ye in at the straight gates, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Conforming to the pattern of the world is the problem so many people have. I want to do because this person is doing. I want to do because this person is doing. I remember when I got newly admitted into the university, living with some people. They wanted me to live their kind of lifestyle, live like them, behave like them. I told them no. I was created for a purpose. I was not created to conform to the pattern of the world. I was created to propagate the gospel of the kingdom of God. I know my reason. I know my, why I exist in this world. I did not try to emulate them. So many people that emulation, conforming to the pattern of this world, is the problem we face. Is a problem youths face in this world. Hey, my friend just came back from Germany. Hey, my friend just went to the city two months. He came back. He made so much money, spraying money, throwing money left and right, hosting parties, building the biggest mansion, building this one. I must make my own money. Whatever way, whatever thing it takes, I must make my money. And because of that, what happens? You dive into sin. You indulge in iniquity. In ritual practice. In Yahoo. Fraudster. Scamming people. Living a life of lies. Forgetting that one day you'll be judged by the way you live your life. Those that bear the mark of Christ are those that have repented totally from sin. Like I said earlier in my last video, that I had lots of revelations and dreams. I'll share one with you today. I saw angels giving people the seal of the living God, but they were just few. Maybe in an organization, they will only seal two people. Wedding parties, three. Burial ceremonies, four. School, six out of thousands, out of millions, out of billions of people. They sealed only it. And they said immediately they stop sealing, they will leave the earth and destruction. That only those that will be saved are those that have received the seal of the living God. How do you receive the seal of the living God? Is it when you are living in sin? Is it when you are swimming in the ocean of iniquity? Is it when you have refused to repent from your sin totally? Leave those people that are disturbing us, the preachers. Please allow me to enjoy my life following married men. 
fornicating anyhow. Now, next topic. We'll learn about the dangers of sex, premarital sex, adultery, how it destroys our destiny, how it attracts demons to the person. Allow me to enjoy my life. Allow me to live my life. Nothing is happening. The world will not end. I don't want, let me tell you. You don't know what is happening spiritually. This earth you live so is, we are living in is very, very deep. We don't know what is happening spiritually. Things are happening in the world. Presently, the angels of God are here. Sailing the saved ones. Sailing those that live in righteousness. Those that live a pure and righteous life. Will you be among them? When you come to collect your people, remember me, good Lord. Remember me, good Lord. When you come to collect your people, remember me, good Lord. Oh my God. When he comes to collect his people, will he remember you? Will you be ready? Will you be like the five foolish virgins in the book of Matthew 25? Or will you be like the five wise virgins that were prepared, that carried extra oil, waiting for the bridegroom to arrive? Or will you be like the foolish ones that were not prepared? Started running helter skelter, looking for where to buy oil. When it was already late, said, please, master, open the gate. Said, it is already late. Depart, for I know you not. And you say, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I have the biggest church. I give, I give the highest donation. I donate to the less privileged. I donate to this. I donate to that. Ah, I have so many awards plaques at home from the church because of my contribution. I am this. I am this. I am that. I am the best on the school teacher. I am the best Bible study student. I am this, I am that. Hey, they have the biggest Bible, the most beautiful. All these things, but still you still live in secret sin. But still you refuse to repent totally from your sin. Let me tell you, all those things does not matter. You are a pastor, but you live in sin. You are deceiving yourself. You are not deceiving God. You cannot deceive God. Rather, you are deceiving yourself. You are heading to the road of destruction. Disease from it today. God is calling you. He is interested in your soul. He loves you. And that is why he has raised armies of evangelists all over the world to preach to you, to preach to your soul. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 24, the gospel of the kingdom of God will preach all over the world for an account. There will be no excuse on that day. Had I known, will always come at last. There will be no excuse for you. I did not hear it though. I did not know stealing was a sin. I did not know lying was a sin. I did not know backbiting, malice, blasphemy, all those things was a sin. I No, no excuse. Repent and be converted. Remember, all things have passed away and all things have become new. a new beginning. You being new in Christ. Tell the devil, you deceived me last year. You will not deceive me this year. You deceived me last month. You will not deceive me this year. I am God on to the very day he will come that i belong to god that enough is enough the devil will not play with your life and your eternity again make that declaration today resist him he will flee the devil can never force you to do his bidding no he can never compel you to live in sin no free will make the right decision and the right choice now tomorrow may be too late that you are alive is a privilege. That you are alive today to make amends is a privilege. So many people died yesterday. So many people this morning. But you, you still have the breath of life. You are still alive. God has given you that privilege to make amends. 
a new beginning. All things are become new. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word has gone out. Father, I pray for all those that watch these videos and all those under the influence of my voice. That I pray that you speak to them always. Lead them to the right way to follow. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen.